Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today we have another Monster Mash. I know it's been a while. Like, I try to make different videos in between, but I know you guys like the Monster Mashes, so we're coming back with basically a mini Monster Mash series within a series. So what we're doing today is I currently am updating my portfolio. I've been wanting to get into the industry for a while, whether that's through freelance jobs or like a part-time gig, full-time gig, whatever. I've always really wanted to get into the industry, whether that's animation or gaming or comics or one of those industries would be awesome to get into. And so I am right now doing a portfolio push. And with that portfolio push, I was told by a mentor of mine to really add a bunch more creature designs and specifically have one where a lot of creatures are in the same environment and kind of like interacting with each other. So we can see some like height differentiations or like how like the food chain would work and the sizing and everything. And so I wanted to kick that off today with this kind of mini series within a series. So the environment that I picked, I first asked over on Patreon and I got this lovely comment. And from there I was like, you know, I really like the idea of doing like a jungle scenery, um, just because like, if you think about the tropical rainforests here and any forests in, you know, on planet earth, there's so much biodiversity and so many really amazing creatures that reside in so many different forests and jungles that I was like, let's just do it. Let's, let's jump in and do a full like little food chain of like, kind of like a tropical rainforest setting. Specifically, I'm thinking kind of like this type of setting where it's almost like ours, but still kind of like an alien planet. I'm kind of doing an in-between of like our world and like the Avatar Blue People universe, but not quite fully to Avatar Blue People universe. It's closer to like our world, but I'm kind of picturing it as if we found another planet that was filled with like amazing tropical jungles and rainforests that had similar creatures to ours, but just a little bit different or kind of a different combo of creatures. So I did kind of this initial concept sketch because I knew that I wanted four different types of creatures interacting in the same scene together. So I was trying to figure out how I wanted to do that or at least what type of creatures I wanted to make for this series. So first of all, we have like a main predator. So this one right here was like the apex predator of this area. Um, that was like my first idea was for sure we needed apex predator. And then I wanted to show their primary prey right here. Um, so we're gonna have to brainstorm and figure out what maybe a large prey animal for these creatures would be. And then next up, I was thinking of having two scavenger-like creatures, not specifically like fully scavenger, but at least creatures that are competing for the food. For example, this one, I'm kind of thinking of very much like a vulture or some type of bird of prey that might be trying to get in there and get some of the meat from the carcass. And then this one could be a smaller carnivore or maybe an omnivore that maybe hangs out to try to also get the scraps that are remaining from the carcasses or they just like try to run in, steal some and run away. You know, like if there's more of them, than there are of the apex predator. They think they might have a chance of getting in there, maybe ripping off a leg and getting out of there before they get chomped by the apex predator. So basically those are the four creatures I wanna make. We have the apex predator, we have the primary prey, and then we have two kind of scavenger-like creatures. And from there, we're gonna basically make this series kind of a four piece mini series. It might be a little bit longer. We might do a fifth one, but for sure we're gonna have four different videos. So what I'm thinking is we'll have a video here for the apex, which is the one you're watching now, a video for the prey, a third video that has both scavengers, and then the fourth video, we're gonna bring them all together. Another piece that I'm going to be referencing specifically for this is this piece by Ali Irwin. I'll put a link down in the description to this one particular. Um, and I thought this was really cool to be able to show each of the creatures side by side in their full size and then kind of labeling them all with a little hint of the background of where they reside. I know that I have the other piece where they're all interacting and like tearing up the carcass and everything, but I'm thinking I'm gonna go with this since I don't really have a piece similar to this in my portfolio. So for this first one, I'm thinking we'll do this 
side profile, all of them stacked together. And then if I do have time, we can do that bigger piece of all of them like interacting and fighting over that carcass. So first we're gonna start with the apex predator. And I did do a little bit of research before jumping into this video and trying to figure out what creatures I wanted to use to combine to make this predator. So at least for the creatures that I've been thinking was I really wanted to combine for these different animals, I really wanted a reptile mammal combo. I thought these would be really interesting if all of them had some type of like scales or reptile feature to them, but also combine them with existing mammals or birds or different creatures that we have. I thought that'd be really cool and match that kind of alien forest vibe. It just, I think adding a reptile bit to each of them would be really, really cool. Okay, so the first two creatures that I wanted for our apex predator were a iguana and a monitor lizard. I really like their shapes overall. We can get a lot of really fun textures from it. And then specifically with the iguana, I really love the spines that go down its back. I think that'd be really cool for a main predator. And then I also like the dewlaps that are present. I think this could be really cool for differentiating like a male and a female for this type of creature. I think it would add maybe a little bit of diversity. We'll push it a little bit and try a couple of different things for maybe like mating or territorial reasons. And then after that, I chose the sun bear. I really like these bears. Um, I hear they're not like the best hunters or they're a little bit uh, klutzy <laughs> with, with their existence. I could be wrong. I just thought I recently watched a video about them, but that's probably why they're fresh in my head. But either way, I really like their really long claws. And I think that V shaped uh, crest on its chest would be really cool to add to those dewlaps and different things that we have um, for the iguana. Because you could just imagine if this kind of puffed up in any way and it had that like red, orange, like V crest shape, I think that'd be really cool to add to the creature. And then finally, I'm going to be using a panther. I really wanted a big cat for the apex predator for this one. I know here, you know, on our planet, <laughs> a lot of the apex predators and areas are these larger big cats. And I just thought it would be really fitting to do a big cat base and start from there and add all these extra cool features to it. And I just really like the idea of making a really cool stalking predator or one that like lives in a family unit. I know panthers, if I remember correctly, typically don't live in family units, they are solo hunters. But for this one, I'm kind of envisioning if you had all these together, plus the basically family unit of a lion is kind of what I'm thinking. So let's go ahead and jump in. We're gonna do a couple of sketches to figure out how I wanna combine these, maybe do some like little bit of color blocking and figure out where we wanna go with this creature. pretty good about these sketches for this creature. I'm really liking where it's going. I do really like the combo of the reptile and like the big cat look. I'm specifically really liking the spines. I thought it'd be really cool if the males had taller, longer spines and the females were maybe like a little bit shorter spined, but I really like how both of these are looking so far. I could see these guys being really good like fishing hunters, uh, both for the bear aspect. I don't know if sun bears, like hunt fish, but I'm just gonna say like fish hunting. And then the monitor lizard I think is known for swimming and catching fish and small birds and different things like that. So I think that would work really well for this one. And then I'm thinking also as well that they could be more of like stalking predators, like in the thick jungles, uh, maybe the spines could kind of replicate different branches or different plant life that's there to help them blend in a little bit more. I think also it'd be kind of cool is while they're stalking, the spines kind of go flat. And then when they pounce or maybe when they're attacking something, they like shoot up for like intimidation purposes as well. I think that'd be really cool. But either way, I'm really liking where we're going with this. So let's jump in, get some uh, finalized sketches for the male and female body shapes, especially in the aspect of having them like side by side. So we'll do two profile drawings of these guys and then we'll lay in the final color and highlights and shadows and 
then we'll be done. So I'll see you guys then. All right, let's jump into the final sketches for this creature. So I first started with the female body uh, just because I knew that that was gonna be the slender, smaller one of the two. And so I wanted to start out with figuring the anatomy of these creatures overall, starting with the female base and then like figuring out how big I want the claws and the spines. And then from there, I basically made the female a little bit more transparent, started sketching the male over top. So then I could really make sure that one, I wanted them just slightly taller than the females, a little bit more bulky. Um, and then that could also make the head a little bit taller as well. I just wanted to make sure the males looked at least a little bit bigger than the females. And this was like the perfect time to really solidify their size difference. So after the sketches were done, it was time to jump in and do some line art. And I had a lot of fun with these because I realized I don't do like, I don't know if you would consider this like a hard profile side view. A lot of the times for my creatures, I notice I do like a three quarter turn or um, I don't really ever do straight on as much either, but I don't know, hard profile side, like as if it was in that piece that I showed earlier on, or uh, maybe kind of like in a museum, like in a very shallow exhibit. It's just like a very hard side view of it. I don't really do super often. Um, so this was kind of fun to figure out how to show all the different limbs and all the different detailing I wanted to show, even at that hard side profile. And I wanted to make sure to show both the front of the face and the profile side. So I was like, all right, I think I'll make the males the profile to show how much larger and wider the face is. And then the females I thought would look really cool as like a three quarter kind of facing the viewer to show those really intensive eyes and the detailing on the face. And then, uh, yeah, I just had a lot of fun like adding in all the little details. The spines were really fun to add in just cause you know, I love horns and spikes and things. So any excuse to put that on a creature, I was just very <laughs> excited for. And uh, yeah, it was just, this, guy, this was really fun to paint and create. It was just an interesting and cool creature to make a concept for. And I'm excited to kind of develop this world a little bit more in terms of like the reptile uh, mammal hybrids. I just think this is going to be a really fun combo of creatures to create. So after I blocked in the base colors from there, I just started doing a little bit of detailing. I wanted to make sure that you could tell that the back of these creatures were basically more scaled than uh, the rest of the creature. And I also wanted to bring over kind of some spotting from the jaguar side of it. Like, yes, with black panthers or jaguars, sometimes you can't see their spots as easily, but to kind of accompany the scale spottage on its back, I was like, we gotta add some like spots to the fur. And I don't know what it is with this creature, but it gives me such a fun, like aquatic cat vibe. I don't know if it's, both the colors and like the scales and such, but even like the fur with the spots gives me a feeling of something like kind of coastal, like maybe a coastal forest or something. I just really love how this is looking. And then I did a couple of extra little concept sketches to add to my portfolio. I wanted to show how the spines lie flat as well as the dewlaps of the male to show how those colors look and what it looks like when it's ready to fight or intimidate something. Okay, so we are all done with this creature concept and I really like these. I think they are a really cool and interesting creature and I would love to see this like in a game. Like I've been really getting into Monster Hunter so I've been really inspired to make really cool creatures and figure out how they would work and their mechanics and such. It's just been a really fun time just brainstorming different creatures. So for these ones specifically, I did a couple of extra sketches. I was recommended by my mentor to add some extra sketches to these character sheets to kind of show specific things that maybe um, a 3D modeler might need or team, like a, a different part of the team needs to know about these creatures. So I wanted to make sure to show how the, the dewlaps would kind of expand either for mating or territorial fights. And then I also wanted to show how the spines, I was thinking how they would lie flat when these creatures were like stalking or getting ready to like 
fight or pounce on something. And then I really wanted to show the male versus female size differentiation. I was thinking males would be a little bit thicker and stockier and the females would be a little bit more thin and agile, but I could see both of these being kind of hunting creatures. I don't know if it would be to the point fully of how within lion packs the females tend to go hunting more so than the males. I don't know if I would want that specifically. I could see them just hunting as family units all together. Maybe the females are the ones that go in for the quick grabs and the jumps and like to really latch onto the prey. And then the male comes in to deliver more of like the final really powerful strike. I could see maybe its claws or its bite would be maybe a little bit more powerful than the female, maybe something like that. That'd be really fun. I think that'd be a really fun mechanic for these guys. But anyway, I think that's where we're gonna leave this one here. We got the concept at least generally figured out for the predator. Next up, we're gonna do the prey creature. So if you would like to see more of the series, more of my monster mashes, and if you aren't already, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button, join our little community. Also leave a like down below if you like the monster mashes and this like mini series within a series. So I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks for the prey creature. I'm really excited for that. Let me know in the comments, like what type of jungle prey or maybe what type of creature would you like to see me combine to add to these to basically make a new prey creature? Like what what like big prey animal or even small prey animals can you think of that these would hunt in our world? But anyway, thank you guys again so much for stopping by and I will see you all next time. Bye everybody.